You're listening to Health Professional Radio. Thank you so much for joining us for another segment. I'm your host, Neil Howard. We're going to be having a conversation with Bill Athenson this morning. He's joining us here from Third Pole Therapeutics to talk about the company's EnoFit. It's the company's proprietary tankless, on-demand, electrically generated, inhaled nitric oxide technology that's safe and it's accurate. It's reliable, lightweight, wearable as well. Welcome to Health Professional Radio, Bill Athenson. Thank you so much for taking the time this morning. Hi, Neil. It's very nice to meet you, and thanks for having me. Well, give our listeners a bit of your professional background. Talk uh, briefly about your area of expertise and your role at Third Pole Therapeutics. Sure, Neil. So I've been in healthcare for 30 years in various executive roles, both in large companies and helping small companies get started, both in pharma and medical device areas. So uh, and uh, most recently, I've been very familiar with the type of patients that our EnoFit uh, portable nitric oxide device is treating. Uh, these are patients with the most severe cases of uh, interstitial lung disease and COPD, um, uh, diseases like pulmonary fibrosis that rob patients of the ability to breathe uh, and, uh, and conduct normal day-to-day activities. And uh, Third Pole Therapeutics, um, how long has it been in existence? Third Pole started uh, in the year 2014, uh, and it was the brainchild uh, and of our founder, Dr. Warren Zapel, who is a world-renowned anesthesiologist, inventor, and scientist, uh, recognized by two presidents for his expertise in oxygenation in both humans and animals. Um, and he had the notion that uh, although nitric oxide uh, – uh, was a discovery that that uh, that he uncovered uh, and brought to the FDA and got approved in 2000 to treat blue babies uh, through tank-based nitric oxide, that there was a better mechanism to improve access through the creation of electrified ambient air to, provo- uh, to uh, produce nitric oxide, which we, of course, do in our system. Now, this is a wearable device, I'm told. Yes, it's about two pounds. Mm-hmm. Um, it it's about the size of a book, uh, and you would either strap it over your shoulder or put it into a backpack, uh, and it would connect via cannula to the patient, uh, and it would allow them to breathe in a, a pulsed amount of nitric oxide that was therapeutically driven uh, to address their inability to oxygenate their blood uh, and improve their um, cardiac output, which, of course, translates into improved mobility um, during a, a very d- distressed period in this disease. Now, we're not talking about technology that's like an oxygen tank. We're, we're talking about something that actually produces pure nitric oxide. Yeah, that's right, Neil. Uh, so nitric oxide is a drug. Um, it was discovered as an endogenous molecule, so it exists inside of our bodies, and it allows our arteries to open um, when it's produced. So what we've done is taken that same property and incorporated it into a device that feeds the patient uh, nitric oxide to open up the vasculature, specifically around the heart and lungs, which enables improved oxygenation and better uh, mobility through better cardiac output. Uh, so we produce this drug on demand in this device by simply charging electricity that's done via battery in the case of our uh, mobile device. We're talking a wearable device that produces sparks, you say, that generate this nitric oxide. How safe and, I guess, user-friendly is this device? Yeah, well, it's it's extremely safe in that the amount of electricity that we're using in a controlled manner is extremely small. Uh, but um, the engineering that goes into this device is quite sophisticated as it relates to delivering the precise amount of nitric oxide that's therapeutically relevant to the patient in a pulse format. So uh, think of it as you, um, when you're connected to the device, the device actually uh, knows when you're breathing, when you're inhaling, and measures the amount of nitric oxide into that inspiratory breath sufficient enough for you to gain the, the benefits of nitric oxide in terms of its ability to open up your vasculature and allow better oxygenation and cardiac output. So it adjusts to your specific condition on that particular day? 
on that particular day, on that particular breath. This nitric oxide was discovered and, and used to treat blue babies in a hospital environment using the tank, correct? That's correct. Yeah, it was discovered in the 90s and then approved for use by the FDA in 2000. Do the doses vary based on the condition, whether it's COPD or whether it's uh, ILD or any other uh, you know, lung condition? Yeah, that's a, that's a really good question, Neil. So relative to the therapeutic dose, it's based on the condition of the patient. So the physician can actually regulate the amount of nitric oxide necessary to treat that particular patient uh, at their particular stage of disease. But for the most part, what we're delivering is a, a fairly standard amount of nitric oxide. Now, it can be adjusted, but the, the unique component to what we've developed is that we deliver it as soon as the breath, within the microsecond of that inhalation, we're delivering nitric oxide. So it feeds the drug directly into the diseased portion of the lung, which is typically the first 60% of the inspiratory breath. So that's the level of sophistication that we've gotten to, to make sure that these patients gain the full benefit of this nitric oxide drug. Are these devices monitored by a healthcare professional remotely, or is it all compact and they're with the, the patient and any information about the device has to be delivered to the, the doctor by the patient? Well, the, the device is designed to be completely self-sufficient by anyone, any patient in need of nitric oxide. So it's designed to be extremely user-friendly. However, we recognize the need for telemedicine, which is extremely important in terms of monitoring the patient's ability uh, to use the product and uh, basically the impact it's having on their respiratory rate, their ability to oxygenate their blood. So there's a number of uh, connectivity features that have been built into this to allow for telemedicine applications, which is basically cloud-based connectivity. So uh, the, the fundamental, um, uh, the basic answer to your question is it's, it's simple to use, but carries with it the sophistication so it can connect uh, patient to physician to enable them to understand the patient condition and the impact it's having. Is this device approved by the FDA as of yet? And uh, if not, when do you expect uh, some type of approval? Yeah, the device is about to enter clinical trials um, and starting uh, early next year. Okay. And we anticipate going through those trials and submitting to the FDA in time for an approval in the first part of 2024. So it, it's, it's quite close. Um, uh, we're obviously doing the best we can to get this out. You know, we've introduced the device, uh, which I have here in my office. I'm holding it right now. Uh, uh, we've already introduced it to uh, leading pulmonologists uh, around the country, and mm -hmm. quite frankly, they can't wait to to get it uh, to use it on patients. So, as soon as we get market approval, uh, we're anticipating pretty rapid adoption. You know, based on the dire need of these patients and the and the clear un, unmet clinical need that exists out there. Uh, for patients suffering from these uh, significant cardiopulmonary diseases. Now, once uh, approval is accomplished, are there plans for expansion uh, uh, worldwide? Sorry, Neil, the approval is anticipated in 2024. Okay. To your other question, yes, we anticipate um, global adoption. Um, you know, there's unfortunately there's there's no limit to these diseases. They spread all over the world. In fact. Countries that are that are experiencing significant uh, air pollution issues um, uh, have a higher incidence of COPD and interstitial lung diseases. So, uh, and and these patients, although for the most part range uh, in 60 years of age and older, what we're finding is many of the, uh, these uh, these restrictive and fibrotic diseases are occurring in young and, and younger and younger patients. So, um, there is quite a global need for for this type of therapy. Give us a website where we can learn more about Third Pole Therapeutics and the technologies that uh, are being developed there. Yeah, you can uh, you can do a, a Google Google search on Third Pole Technologies or go to our website at www.pole p o l e the number three dot com. Thank you. Thank you so much, Bill. It's been a pleasure speaking with you. I'm looking forward to speaking with you again once Enofit is uh, tested and approval uh, is, is gained. And I'm hoping that we'll uh, have an opportunity to speak as the testing is going on.
Oh, happy to do it, uh, Neil. It's a pleasure talking with you and sharing our story. It's quite exciting. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, in conversation with Mr. Bill Athenson, CEO of Third Pole Therapeutics. Audio copies of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes. Listen in, download it, SoundCloud, and be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com, Health Professional Radio.